The Nigerian government denies stopping Nigerians from using Twitter. And Nigeria is going through its worst unemployment crisis, says the World Bank. Well, this is Plus Politics, and I am Mariana Paul. The Nigerian government has denied stopping people from using Twitter in the country despite announcing the suspension of the operations of the social media platform in Nigeria. The Attorney General of the Federation, Abubakar Malami, made the claim in a counter affidavit issued in response to an originating motion filed by a human rights lawyer in Ibege Fion. He is suing the government on the legitimacy of enforcing a Twitter suspension in Nigeria, Efiong is actually seeking nine reliefs, including an order of perpetual injunction restraining the respondent from further suspending, deactivating, or banning the operation and accessibility of Twitter or any social media service in Nigeria. Well, joining us to discuss this is Barrister Chris Itamonola. Uh, we also have Barrister Courage and Sirimovu, and both of them are legal practitioners, obviously. And before my Bamuno is a broadcast journalist, and he does business on Twitter. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. <laughs> Good evening. <laughs> <laughs> of course, we all use social media. Oh, and, well. And that's where the conversation is coming from. But I'll start with you, Barista Itamunola. The, um, uh, the, the AGF uh, <clears throat> this um, morning um, said that Nigerians have not been stopped um, um, using Twitter, he, he said that many Nigerians are using Twitter through the VPN service and most of the people that are complaining that they're unable to use Twitter are still using Twitter. But this, this suit against the federal government, of course, um, with Malami as um, one of the, um, the people who have been called in the suit, um, is it about us having access to Twitter or is it about the banning? Because, of course, people ha still have access to Twitter, but they have to pay to get that access. Um, but the government has said Twitter is suspended till further notice. Uh, uh, so what is the statement by the AGF? What does it mean in, in essence and legally? Um. First and foremost, uh, good evening to you and also to our worthy um, listeners. Now, a law, an offense is an offense because the law says that it is an offense. And of course, there are offenses that are, pres uh, are prescribed directly by the Constitution, the criminal code. But there are also offenses that becomes uh, acts that become offenses by virtue of pronouncement of government. I'm aware that sometime about 5th of uh, June 2021, the federal government went, I mean, came on air and made a very categorical pronouncement that usage of Twitter in Nigeria will be an offense. And one of the direct consequences of that was the fact that Media stations, media uh, stations, media units of the uh, uh, federal government or private or whatsoever were automatically barred from the usage of it. So the fact that Nigerians circumvented, that's not the important thing. The important thing is you have denied the, uh, the, the, the average citizen of the, uh, of the federal government of, uh, of Nigeria uh, a, a, a breach of his fundamental right as enshrined in the Nigeria, uh, section 36 of the Nigerian constitution. So this is, this is my question, because I, I, I'm a bit confused. The Nigerian constitution doesn't have any law that, that, that actually covers social media or access to Twitter or the likes, does it? Is there anything in the constitution that covers that aspect, apart from the human rights issue, which you are citing, and, and Zinibaga is also citing in his suit, um, there is no express condition in the law that says the government cannot allow or government ca um, can stop us because of one reason or the other from using social media platforms, aside from human rights abuses. Is there anything in the Constitution that could cover... Well, there is nothing in the... 
there is nothing directly in the constitution, so to say, but there are uh, innuendos. There are innuendos that can constitute, if, for example, the, con the, the government feels threatened that by the pronouncement or statements of uh, persons or group of persons that uh, a statement can, can be inferred to be a hate speech by interpretation. Of course, what is a hate speech is another category entirely. The government can, uh, can, uh, can, can proceed against uh, such persons. For example, you are talking about Igbo, you are talking about a Kanu, and so on. They use the social media, they use uh, the strength of uh, what they call the media, well, be it uh, the print or uh, any other form, to, 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 to advance at this thing. And once the government, it, it's a subjective opinion, once the government, in its opinion, views that this particular comment threatens it, now it advances uh, what they call it, its powers. That is where we are. And for government to now come, I mean, Malami, as the attorney general, holds a very high, very highly exalted position. I'm a lawyer. He's a senior advocate of Nigeria. We do not speak from two sides of our mouth. It's unfortunate. Okay, let me bring courage here. Barista Courage and Surimovo, can you hear me? Clearly, loud and clear. Perfect. Uh, give me your two pence on this issue because I, I sincerely am a bit confused. Is the government saying that, well, they shut down Twitter uh, and, and they're okay with us circumventing it? I mean, because we still have access to it and they don't have a problem. Um, I, I'm trying to understand what the AGF means, you know, when he says that they, they haven't stopped Nigerians from using Twitter because we're still on Twitter. Um, first of all, let me appreciate you for the privilege and let me acknowledge um, um, a senior colleague also in the studio. Um, you could see clearly, like the senior colleague has also said, that the attorney general is speaking from two sides of his mouth. Now, um, I want to address the question that you raised initially. Please allow me to do so. When you stated that there is no clear provision in the Constitution on matters concerning social um, media, when we talk about the right to freedom of expression, that position, uh, provision clearly states that this expression of your opinion can be from whatever media platform. Now, the simple meaning of that is that it includes social media or any other media platform. And that right, according to the Constitution, should not be unreasonably or unjustifiably interfered with. Now, the position of the generality of public and the legal minds in Nigeria are that at the point the president made that executive statement, so to speak, and banned the use of Twitter, he interfered with that um, constitutional right of millions of, uh, about 39 million Nigerians that are, you know, active users of that Twitter space to freely express their opinions one way or another. Well, but the, attorney, but, the attorney, have... but the attorney general, um, I'd like to quote him directly, uh, disagrees with what you are saying because he said that Nigerians are still tweeting even at the moment um, as the ban on Twitter is not aimed at intimidating Nigerians or an infringement on the rights of Nigerians to express their opinion. In other words, he's saying what we said uh, or what we put out as a ban or a suspension of Twitter is not aimed at infringing on the rights of Nigerians. And, and, and he's also saying that they have a right to express themselves. But I think, the I grass think of the government in his, in his statement is that Twitter has allowed its platform to be used by elements that are one way or the other are against the government. This is what he says the problem is. If, if the people have some way that some persons, I for one, and I know most people are not able to assess their Twitter, but if some persons have circumvented um, that um, particular policy by going through other means to use Twitter, that does not, you know, 
um, directly or indirectly mean that the use of Twitter was not banned. So whatever statement is making, it's, it's absolutely incorrect. I'm saying this even to show some level of respect to him. If not, I would have said it's an outright lie to the people of Nigeria. And again, this matter is also before the court. Sheriff had gone to court, you know, to challenge this particular position. Mm -hmm. And um, we are hopeful that there will be an outcome, even though, um, of course, if you go to court to seek an injunction, you don't seek an injunction for something that has already been done. I know that may be the challenge with that particular case. But then let's not preempt the court. Let's see what comes out of that um, particular case. Okay, let me come to Forma in the studio. Forma, you, you, you double as a journalist. You're the head of news school, Azobia Info. Uh, you write the stories, obviously. And, and I'm guessing that Serge had told you directly that deactivate Twitter. We don't want to see here Twitter even in the news, you know, when you're closing the news. Because every media house will say, follow us on Twitter, Instagram. As a journalist, how does this affect you? Because every, even the print media, Literally, everybody moved to social media, especially Twitter, uh, because it's short, precise, and you can put out your message in 140 characters. Um, when the AGF comes up with this statement, how does it make you feel as a news person? Well, I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to be politically correct like um, your, your, your last guest, uh, you know, who said he, he wants to um, respect the, the AGF. I don't think this is a question of respect. Let's say it the way it is. He's a bold-faced liar. There are no two ways about it. Um, as soon as that pronouncement was made on June the 4th, the next day, it was a Friday, like today, the next day by Saturday morning, um, the mobile, um, sorry, the internet providers in the country, all of them, you know, blocked access to Twitter. Today is the 23rd of July till today, that access is still blocked. Whoever is using Twitter, I wouldn't even want to say circumvent, because that would mean you're breaking a law. Mm -hmm. There's actually no law stopping people from using Twitter. The government pronouncement is even, maybe I'm not a lawyer, but I know that, like the lawyers have said, there's freedom of expression. You can express yourself in whatever means, including social media. So anybody who is telling me not to express myself through Twitter, you know, is actually infringing on my rights. So the, the people who are actually um, using Twitter, as it is right now, are using Twitter through other means because the right means to do that via um, the internet providers have been blocked. Mm. So I honestly, I, I saw that story this morning. Well, I could understand because unfortunately, um, this is the government that came into power through a lot of disinformation, misinformation. So it's not a surprise. They've told lots of lies. You know, Really? Yeah, they have. They have? Yeah, they have told lots of lies. Hmm. You know, or they've twisted... Um, could it be propaganda, you mean? Well, maybe you, you could add that. But see, the truth of the matter is that on one hand, the government has um, a good reason to want to do what they want to what do. What is this good reason? Because um, Nigerians are still trying to understand what the good reason is. The, the good reason is that... I, there, do, not see, I do not see... Okay. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm using a, the, a wrong term. Maybe it's not... Maybe not good reason is really, really doesn't portray what I'm trying to say. My point is that social media has also been abused. Let's, let's call it spade is spade. You know, there's, there's been lots of... But everything is abused. Drugs there have been lots of abused. lies told on social media. Uh, including those of us who are even journalists, you know, stories have been twisted, you know, um, propaganda machine. So, yes, I can understand the government's concern when it comes to dealing, but Nigeria already has laws that deal with these issues. I'm interested in the twisted stories and all of that. I know, I know that WhatsApp and Facebook are the most terrible platforms in terms of propaganda. We see all sorts. Twitter even has some verifications. You know, they, they do some work in terms of, you know, verifying news if it's true or false. But when the government tries to make it look like it's because Twitter is the playing ground for propaganda, I'm worried. But if government had been concerned about Twitter, 
Why did he wait until the president's tweet was, de was taken down for them to act? Because people are still asking, is Mr. President really sure, is the federal government really sure that it's not about the tweets that was deactivated? The, the, the fact that they feel insulted that the president of the country, uh, the largest, popul high, highest populated country was taken down or that it is just that Twitter has become a publisher of fake stories? So, so here's the honest truth. The honest truth is that these issues did not start today. It goes all the way back to 2020, the NSAS protest. Um, if, we want to, if we want to call a spade a spade. Now, as a result of you know, how Twitter is, a lot, a lot of the protests started with social media, Twitter especially. And then the, um, the CEO, um, Dursey, actually actively participated in the sense that um, he used the platform to actually help um, um, the organ, okay, not the organizer, some of the persons who were part of that protest, mm -hmm. you know, to get funds. Now, as far as the government was concerned, that was a problem. Mm -hmm. It was a problem because the government itself failed to understand what exactly the NSAS protest was for. You remember the president in his last media interview did talk about the fact that people wanted to overthrow him. If it felt, it felt, I was really annoyed when I heard that. But then I remember that early this year, I was in the presence of a senior legal state government official who was discussing the whole answers and the aftermath. You, Marianne, I can't say right here publicly some of the things I heard. Like, it, it felt like I was, my mouth was open. I'm like, really? So there's a disconnect. The people in government really did not understand what the whole protest was. Yes, a lot of people well, took advantage of it. Well, the protest did start as a protest against a rogue police organization, but it did metamorphose into um, accountability, you know, good governance, good governance, and all of that. But the, what what is wrong in Nigerians asking for accountability? If there was any, would we have so been the, asking? So the problem, the problem I'm, I'm trying to explain to you now is that from the government angle, from people in government, they did not see that protest as asking for accountability. For them, it was about people, it was about the opposition on one angle, it was about separatists. In fact, they even roped IPOB into it. No jokes, you know. And so, if the, if the president himself can openly tell you that NSA's protest was about trying to overthrow him, that's why in their statement banning Twitter, they said Twitter was um, threatening the corporate existence mm -hmm. of Nigeria. So it goes all the way back to that issue. Did Jack Dorsey use Twitter to help with the, uh, the funding of NSAS? Yes, but because they thought NSAS was about overthrowing the government, so when the whole issue about the president's tweets was, was taken down, you know, there had already been discussions within them to, to use, to, to do something, and they saw that as an opportunity to do it. To I'm do curious, by Saitabunola, can a Twitter CEO single-handedly raise funds for a protest to unseat a government. How possible is that? Say it again. I, I mean, according to what Uforma is saying here, he's saying that the government was claiming that the funding of the NSAS protest by the Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey was in a bid to overthrow the Buhari government. So I'm asking, can a Twitter or a tech um, CEO single-handedly through a protest of young people who are sick of a rogue police force single-handedly overthrow a government that, like that of President the, 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 answer, the, the answer is no. The answer is no. And uh, uh, what is important is, of course, rather than to focus on that particular source, I thought that the government will focus on itself and cleanse itself and ask itself a number of questions. Why are we where we are? Why is the government being threatened? The government in 2014 used this same medium, both Twitter and other uh, what they call it, forms of social media avenues, I mean, to gain, I mean, to, 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 to advance itself into governance. And one of the futures of uh, a democracy is liberty to be able to express yourself, of course, within the context of its limits, so that the CEO are being accused and what you are. You will have uh, various ways of uh, uh, checkmating 
uh, what they call security challenges. What the government should be looking at in this particular instance is not gagging the, the citizenry. What it should be doing, I mean, as at now, in terms of economy, five, over 500 now uh, to the dollar uh, uh, insecurity in every part of the country, that should be the challenge of the government. Mm. The average Nigeria cannot eat, does not have food, no job whatsoever. That should be... The, those are the promises they promised, and the, 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 the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, with all due respect to him, should undertake steps to fulfilling this and not stopping. So if once, you see, as a lawyer, I need to let you know this, eh? once there is a threat that your rights are going to be violated, that right in the eye of the law is assumed to have been threatened. That's why, for example, if there is a threat that the police is going, the police is going to arrest you, under the, uh, the fundamental rights uh, rules, you have a right to go to court to seek protection. So the fact that the government has already given a, a blanket ban that uh, against the usage of Twitter, that automatically is, is offensive against the rights of the citizenry. Mm. And to say that, of course, when you take a step, what, what the average Nigerian is going to start looking for an alternative. So the fact that you are looking for an alternative to advance your right does not mean that the right itself has not been breached. And I think this is the, 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 the main point. All right, um, Courage, back to you. Um, looking at the body language of this government uh, and the prayers of Barista Nibere Fiong, which is, I'd like to quote it directly, uh, he's seeking nine reliefs. He's seeking uh, an order of perpetual injunction restraining uh, the respondents, which is the federal government, the AGF, et cetera, et cetera, uh, from suspending, from deactivating, or banning the operation and accessibility of Twitter and other social media platforms. Let's not forget that in the news last week uh, or two weeks ago, uh, the government was also hinting at pushing for you know, the ban of WhatsApp and monitoring it. Yes, they wanted to monitor WhatsApp. And WhatsApp is a bit more um, personal to the user, uh, more than Twitter. Uh, so he, all of these prayers, he's, he's saying that all of these are a violation of human rights. But remember that the ECOWAS court had ruled on this matter. The federal government has not shifted grounds. What is the, I mean, really, is there any, um, is there any assurance that the government might shift grounds on this issue? Because it's, it's, it's been going on for weeks and weeks. And uh, from weeks, it will turn to months, and who knows? It might just be the whole year, and we might not have access to Twitter uh, through our, our social media, uh, our social, um, I beg your pardon, our pr providers, uh, MT and, and Glow and all of them. So what do we do? Um, like we have come to understand, the democracy that we enjoy today was not freely given. The fact that SARS was banned, was not freely given. It took um, an active citizenry to advocate against practices that are undemocratic, like what we have now. Let me quickly say that um, the people in Nigeria are very reasonable people. I would clearly say so. And when there was lockdown, Lockdown was a limitation and restriction of our rights to freedom of movement. The question, as it were, is that whether or not it was reasonably justifiable. Was it good? Was it for, for the interest of the public? And that is yes, a pandemic was being prevented. Mm -hmm. Now, the question of limitation of our right to freedom of expression by the ban of Twitter, thereby interfering with our right to freedom to speak, is it reasonably justifiable? And the answer is no. However, the case in court, I have my concerns with that particular case. Maybe I've not basically looked at the prayers, but I know that in law, you cannot go seeking for an injunction for what has already be, been done. Mm. 
So that's a challenge with that particular case. Now, but, whether but, but, or not but, but many of your colleagues, not, but many of your colleagues have, many of your colleagues have argued that there's no legality to the suspension in the first instance. So, Pardon? can you really say it's in force? I mean, yes, telecommunication providers have adhered to it, but does it still mean that you cannot get an injunction for it if we, if we are, legally speaking, um, looking at it as something that is, is illegal in the first instance? I, I think, um, basically, you can um, go to court to, you know, ask the court to interpret and, of course, um, get that particular you know, either order, ban, or executive order. Um, if the court can make a pronouncement that is invalid, it's against the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and all of that, then at that point in time, we go back to, you know, status quo ante. And that means, um, of course, the court's making a consequential order that people can now um, be allowed to freely you know, access Twitter as one of the forms of um, freedom of expression. Yes, of, of course, that can be done. You raised a question on the body language of, the, of this administration, mm -hmm. whether um, they may lift the ban. Through continuous advocacy and pressure on the Federal Republic of um, Nigeria, or the government of the day, I think that would um, definitely be achieved. Uh, Ufoma, I don't know. Um, do we? Do you see Nigerians putting pressure anymore? Because, like, like we have been saying, a lot of people have looked for other means of accessing, you know, accessing Twitter, and they are. It's become normal right now. People are they've forgotten about it. So, really, do we see that pressure being mounted anytime soon? And just the same question I asked: the body language of the president. We know how the president is. He never really shifts ground on anything. Um, do we see that happening, or will we see Twitter um, unbanned, for the want of a better word, just close to the elections, for the benefit of our politicians? Unfortunately, I don't think so. Here's me, I, and I said it on the day you know, the ban was made, that even if the Supreme Court rules against the president, I do not... Are you saying that our president is disobedient to court orders? Well, he told a gathering of lawyers early in his administration that he can as well suspend the um, human rights of any individual if it goes against... Um, um, yeah, what, what was he it talked again? about security yeah. and state of the nation exactly. being superseding the exactly. rule of Exactly, and unfortunately, lawyers were cheering him back then. Today, we're seeing you know, the repercussions. Someone will ask, why are we all going on and on and on about Twitter? Well, according to NetBlocks, um, that tracks internet governance, Nigeria loses on a daily basis on a daily basis, $6 million to this ban. Wow. That's over 2 billion naira. Hmm. Let's even not go far. Let me come down to the basics. Ufume Bamunu sitting here, as soon as that ban was done, a, mo a week later, I lost a deal on Twitter worth over a million naira. That's me. Who doesn't get that much business done on Twitter? Imagine the people whose livelihoods depend on social media. Mm. So yes, it, 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 the reason we're talking about this is because of the economic uh, um, repercussions yeah. you know, that it has. Unfortunately, because the government is hell-bent on gagging not just social media, but media in a whole, you can see the number of um, bills being introduced in the House of Assembly. That's a story for another day. Like I said, even if the Supreme Court rules against this order, I, honest, I, I hope I'm wrong, but I honestly do not believe that President Warren will change You don't believe this. that with the elections coming, because 2022 is, of course, going to be the campaign long year. Uh, you do not see the government shifting grounds on that basis, because no. this is also something, like Mr. Tamanola said, the, the, the government of the day came to power, rolled on the wings of social media. We saw how they laundered the image of Mr. President for him to get into power on these same platforms. So do you not see that happening for the APC? So I'm an Isoko man. An Isoko man is usually called Tolopia. We do, what does that mean? That's cutlass. Uh -huh. You don't, it's an abomination, so to speak, to hold the cutlass behind an Isoko man. Why? Because an Isoko man knows how to use the cutlass very well. Mm -hmm. Why am I saying this? You just noted that this present government came to power through a lot of social media usage. They know how effective it can be. 
part of all of this ban or whatever it is, plans to gag the media, is all preparations for 2023. Whatever is going to, because unfortunately, Twitter has, Twitter over time has become like the unseen opposition to the government. A lot of persons have voiced their opposition. A lot of things have changed because of Twitter. They know how powerful a tool social media is. Yes, social media has these issues. Time will not allow us to get into all of that. I'm not going to deny that fact. Yes, Twitter itself has double standards. I'm not going to deny all of that. But using that as an excuse to stop you know, um, every other person, I do not see them changing it because one way or the other, it will have adverse effects on their plans to, of course, retain power in 2023. Well, we'll keep our fingers crossed uh, on this particular one and see how it continues to develop. Uh, special thanks to uh, Barista Chrissy Tamanola and Barista um, Courage and Siri Movo. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for being here. And for Mike Bamana, thank you so much My for thank you. part of the conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Great. We'll take a short break. Thank you for staying with us. And when we return, we discuss the unemployment in Nigeria and what the World Bank has to say about it and how the, if it will affect us uh, as a country. Stay with us.